You need to understand that there are bad people in this world that will want to do bad things to this world. And that thankfully that there's a group of people that will step in and um, they'll fill the gap uh, you know, for, for the rest that, that are able to enjoy the things they do. My name is Jim Jones. Uh, and I'm from Jacksonville, Alabama, uh, currently, originally from Texas. And uh, I served in the United States Army uh, for approximately 20, 24 years. Uh, the majority of that, over 20 of years of that, was in uh, special operations community between uh, the Ranger Regiment and Special Forces. Um, I retired as a Master Sergeant, uh, 18 Zulu Team Sergeant for uh, Special Forces ODA. I had, a, I had a break of service uh, a couple of times. The first time I got hurt pretty bad. I actually got medical out of the Army, and uh, that's when I met my wife. And uh, I was doing some a uh, little bit of cowboy and work at the time, and went back in the Army again later, uh, and then got out. Uh, and after that, kind of went, went to work for a, a cow outfit down in, in Waco, Texas. And uh, folks were kind enough to hire me on there, and we stayed with them for a pretty good while and, and working cattle there. And, then uh, I went, actually went into the ministry uh, as a pastor. Spent about 10 years pastoring uh, a church in Texas and then a church in Wyoming. Uh, Spending 10 years up there. So that was kind of the in-between time. I, I went back in uh, after a 16-year break of service, uh, which is kind of crazy. Um, but uh, after uh, our, our country was attacked uh, on 9-11, there was a period of time that, that I kind of just sat and continued on with, uh, with the ministry. And just on a whim, I thought there might be a chance that they would take an old guy back. And uh, so I went to see a recruiter and uh, found myself uh, enlisting uh, and went to 20th Special Forces Group. Uh, a month after I went to see the, uh, uh, the recruiter, about, a, I don't know, seven, eight months later, uh, I was in Iraq uh, and uh, with a Special Forces ODA team. And, uh, and then spent the next 10 years after that. I thought I'd do one tour and uh, just stayed, kept going, you know, a couple more here, doing some other work. Uh, so, but uh, I wanted to serve back with Special Forces because um, uh, those were uh, the guys I were used to, the guys I love being around. Uh, I like the mission that we have and uh, have always enjoyed that, uh, being a very small, specialized community, yeah. Uh, I, I retired uh, because basically they said I got too old uh, and uh, that was about four years ago. Um, I look back on it as, as something that was a, a great part of my life but it didn't completely define my life. Uh, so I, I stepped right back into the role of being a civilian and uh, being a husband uh, to my wife and uh, being a father and being a grandfather. So now we, um, I actually pastor a church again, and uh, I'm also, uh, we run some cattle, uh, so I'm able to, you know, kind of keep my roots uh, where they all began. I'm Christian Dunn. First and foremost, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm a designer, an educator, a father, a husband, um, and currently I'm teaching graphic design at Jacksonville State University. Some of the things that I love about being a graphic designer is that every project is different. Um, that we get to solve a lot of different problems, uh, whether that be branding, logo design, uh, websites, t-shirt designs, posters or gigs, uh, packaging. There's a lot of different things and for me that was one of the things that I immediately gravitated towards graphic design. I loved being able to use imagery and typography together in a way um, that communicates hopefully clearly to the general public. Um, I like the idea of art for the people uh, and for me graphic design was that outlet. So I, I met Christian uh, at church actually and uh, when I saw Christian, we were going to a place called Eagle Point uh, and, uh, here in Jacksonville. And, and when he came in, uh, he literally came in uh, looking like a skateboarder because, and actually he had a skateboard under his arm, uh, flat brimmed cap. And I thought, you know, that's a guy I want to get to know right there because that's not your norm for walking into uh, to a church. And I thought, I want to get to know this young man. 
over about a year um, of recognizing that I needed a mentor, uh, I finally just went up to him and asked him, hey, are you discipling anyone? He said no. And I said, okay, when, when can we meet? Uh, and that's how uh, Jim and I met and, and started to um, build a relationship. Yeah, I think it's important for us to, for everybody to have a mentor relationship of some type. Um, I, I have older men in my life, and, you know, and I'm, I'm in my sixth decade, but I have some men that are in their seventh and eighth decades uh, that I like to sit and, and listen to them uh, because they, they have walked a path that I have not walked yet. Uh, and so they're able to help guide me uh, through some of those paths without making the mistakes that they have made. And I think that uh, no matter where we find ourselves at, at my age, you know, with Christian, I'm able to, uh, to hopefully show him a few things about life that uh, maybe he could avoid some of the pitfalls that I made. But conversely, I, I also believe that Christian has a lot to teach me. Um, I think that if an older person is only able to, to look at a younger person and say, I'm the only guy that's got this figured out, and he can't glean some information from a younger person, then he's lost perspective on life. I thought Jim would be a good participant for this project because he comes from the Special Forces, uh, which is pretty unique. There's a very small percentage of men and women who are part of that community. And so not only that, but Jim's background in um, cowboy culture is just also very unique. Uh, and so I thought uh, his story, where he's come from, uh, I thought all of those things would tell a great story, but then also uh, I thought as the graphic designer would uh, create, be able to create a cool image to tell that story. Another thing that I really liked about this process and this project was that Jim was going to get to see what I do for a living. Um, normally he hears me talk about you know my job and what I do or other little projects that I'm working on um, but he's never actually seen the graphic design process and so this was a lot of fun to be able to directly bring him into my universe uh, and see this process from start to finish. For the aesthetic of this project, I immediately knew with Jim's cowboy background that I wanted that to be the aesthetic. Uh, the, um, the western vibe, um, using ropes, cactus, um, the running W that I would see on his horse's saddle. Um, I knew I wanted to incorporate those things uh, along with his sayings that he had, like, get up and get on. Um, Jack, jump jackrabbit. I knew uh, that that rabbit had to be a part of the design, uh, as well as because his faith is most important to him. I wanted imagery that both represented the cowboy SF and his faith. Um, using the cowboy hat, the vest, cowboy gloves, the boots, as things that represent those cultures, but then also represent for us the body of Christ, that everybody is different, everybody is made different, we all have different gifts, but we all come together as a whole, we're all used for the same purpose, um, but as one being uniquely different. Uh, and so that's, that's what I wanted to incorporate into this design. As a screen printer, I knew that I wanted to print limited edition posters for Has Heart and for this project. Um, I love screen printing uh, and because I love it so much and I love what Kendra and Tyler are doing with Has Heart, um, trying to raise support, trying to raise awareness, um, I wanted to be able to give them uh, another opportunity to do that. Uh, and so I just thought being able to screen print a poster would be a lot of fun for these guys. And I love screen printing because it's such a hands-on process. There's this uh, digital aspect where I can still design things on the computer, 
why being able to output that physically through screen printing, there's this physicalness and this tactile experience of smelling the ink and mixing it, um, printing directly onto paper. You know, I don't, I'm not just hitting a command P and it's printing out digitally, um, but that I'm physically pulling ink through a screen onto paper. There's a satisfaction about that. Um, and again, this physicality about it that I think also is one of the reasons why Jim and I connected so easily um, of just getting your hands dirty, uh, making things, doing that well, um, having a craft uh, that is important to us, um, that we continue to learn and to build on. Uh, and so that's why it was super important for me uh, to screen print this uh, poster for Has Hard. My hope for when civilians see this project and this design is that they would not be afraid to ask questions uh, and not be afraid to go and be a part of a veteran's life. Um, that these men and women, they need us um, just as much as we need them. And so I hope that uh, this inspires a civilian to go and get to know uh, veterans more and see how they can they can help out and, and be a part of their, their lives. Uh, if I if I were to go back and think of what am I the most proud of, obviously serving our country, um, probably working with the men. Uh, that's that's what I'm proudest of. Uh, to be able to work with a, such a professional group of young men, those men really made me uh, a much, much better uh, person and a much better NCO, a much better leader, uh, just by surrounding myself with some really strong personalities, some really, uh, I think, uh, exceptional, exceptional men. Uh, I would say that uh, they made me shine bright. Without them, then uh, my career would have been pretty lackluster, but they, they really are the ones who made my career uh, exceptional and made me look forward uh, to getting up, up every day and uh, being part of uh, that mission that we had.